Mayang adlo mga amigo. My name is MJ and today we are going to talk about the book The Lady Who Left by J.D. Ruiz. So in case you didn't know, yes, this book was written by J.D. Ruiz who is a Filipino author. It is a historical fantasy romance about a woman named Presida who is very rebellious and who is very bubbly who was then arranged to a marriage this lord named Callan who was this mysterious man who came from a very prominent family and they live in this hidden world below ground in which they live like some sort in in a 1800s type of setting and stuff like that so basically that's the whole like summary of this book so in this video i'm going to talk about the main points in which i find interesting in this book and the very first point is about the main characters which is Cressida and Callan. To be completely honest, Cressida and Callan are the typical like historical romance like characters. Cressida is very rebellious and very like against the society in which she lived in and she wanted to go out. So basically that's actually a plot of the book which she really went out of the town which is above ground. And then Callan is actually this mysterious like man a very rich man a very mysterious rich man who has a lot of secrets so basically that's the characters which is very typical in a historical romance book however i still love them of course the second point which i want to talk about is that the setting actually made me quite uncomfy i mean just the fact that it was below ground and there are only like few light sources coming from the holes like on the top of their place where they get light from the above like that's that's very uncomfy for me and the other sources of light in their place are very artificial as well as their water like bodies like the lakes the ponds all of them are artificial and to be completely honest that is very uncomfy for me like i can only imagine a very damp dark place so yeah the third thing is that the concept pretty much reminded me of city of ember the concept the setting is very similar to city of ember and then the concept of cressida it's very similar to city of ember in which the main character wanted to go out to actually like go and find a better place but in this case except for city of ember, city of ember is that the city is actually like dying already but in this one cressida just wanted to go out because she hates the town and wanted to actually Make adventures for herself so yeah like that the fourth thing which i want to talk about is the whole story about Callan's mother isn't clear i wanted to know more tea so in this book actually Callan's mother is actually a rebel against the government so basically i'm just going to explain the government for you the government of this place is that there is this secret society who controls the information above ground and then Callan's mother was able to know about that and she joined this rebels where they wanted to like give the people uh, on the town knowledge about the um things above town so basically they wanted to go against the secret society and then Callan's mother actually like committed adultery because she fell in love with somebody else and then she manipulated Callan and then Callan sentenced her to death because Callan is part of the secret society it was not that elaborated in the book and I do hope that it will be elaborated in the next books because this series is all about Callan and his brothers and their love teens I don't know if that's the right term but anyway I do hope that it will be elaborated in the next books because I think that is pretty interesting and also I wanted to know who is the head of the rebels because that would be like a very very huge tea because I do have some theories about that but I don't know if that's right the fifth one is the writing style is amazing although I must admit I am seeing some errors when it comes to the spelling and I think it comes down to the editor there is a problem when it comes to Filipino books in this country like the Filipino books published in this country are not that edited well which is a shame because there are a lot of good books in our bookstores that are made by Filipino authors but they were not edited properly although it's not that like a lot but considering that they are publishing this and selling it in a bookstore I think the editors should do a much better job the sixth point which I want to talk about is if you like sexy scenes in a book, this book is for you. Personally, I don't like reading sexy or smutty scenes anymore because that is not my forte anymore and I am not comfortable in reading that like type of literature anymore. So yes, but if you like sexy scenes, this book is for you. 
The next point which I want to talk about the whole plot when it comes to the romance and is honestly heartwarming and it gives me necessary feels because it was a very slow burn and there is fighting and I think that is why I love JD Ruiz because she's very capable in like giving me the feels when it comes to romance because there are a lot of slow burn and a lot of slow burn and I don't like really like fast-paced romances and she is really good with slow burn romances and that's one of the things which I love about this book. The next one, the next point, is that the trope is animus to friends to lovers, which is a blast. Personally, I don't really like animus to lovers like instantly. I want if there is like an enemy's part of the romance, I wanted them to be friends first, which is what happened in this book. So yes, I really love the trope here. And the last one is I can see some Bridgerton references in this book. Like there are like surnames of characters which are edited a bit, but it is very similar to the surnames in Bridgerton, like for example Featherton and Bridgerton. So yeah, it, there are Bridgerton references and I can see that J.D. Ruiz actually loves Bridgerton and I think that's one of the major books that inspired her to write this book, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. So, my rating for this book is actually 3 stars, and it's not because of the fact that I hated it, but it's because of the fact that it took me a very long time to finish this book. So basically, my feelings, my ratings for this book is based on the fact that it took me a very, very long time to actually finish this. Like, I think it was 3 weeks or something. So, yeah. That's it. So if you want a historical fantasy romance with twist, um, I would recommend this for you. And if you want to support Filipino authors, I can also recommend this for you. You can buy this online and I think in National Bookstore. And also, this is not sponsored. So yeah. So yeah, that's it for this video. I do hope that you enjoyed watching my book review slash book talk. And I do hope that I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Oh, one mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning.